We got to play X Defiant. Uh, the game is out right now for everybody, free to play. Uh, we did a stream yesterday of us playing the game, but then also I went home and I started playing, again, after midnight. After I got Jesus, off the of stream at like midnight, I was like, you know what, man, I can play some X Defiant right now. Um, Mike, you're- Tim, the game is out. The Just game is out. I know you were wondering, I know you were yeah. wondering. The game is out. It's on Steam? It's on Steam? Uh, no. Oh, no. no, no Steam. Not, Steam. Soft not too happy with that. Oh, sorry about that. No, not so happy connect. with that. I thought uh, a big shooter would be on Steam, my bad. You would think a free to play shooter that's everywhere, that you want to have the biggest player base for, you would put it on the largest PC platform. I mean, their player base is a little big already. They're not the the servers are having issues. Like crazy, yesterday. it's crazy. We weren't able to get into the game. Put that on Steam, <laughs> Mike. You're one of the FPS bros in my life. Yep. How are you feeling about X Defiant after day one? You know what? We just talked about Marvel Rivals, and I think the biggest thing I can say about X Defiant right here in Marvel Rivals is I left my time playing Marvel Rivals wanting to play more. I left X Defiant being like, okay, cool, that's enough. Right, like there's no desire for me to turn this game back on anytime soon. Uh, if it's to play with Bless or an Andy or some of the Jabroni boys in my life, I'll probably play it for a night. But like honestly and truly, I had my fill, and there's no desire to go back to this at this time for me. But I am excited to talk about it because there is some positives I do want to highlight. Right, I think me saying that I don't want to deter people because there's some cool stuff in this, but there's some negatives where I'm like, eh, this they you didn't hit the mark. Ubisoft. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about it, Bless. What did you like? What did you not like? I mean, I I I liked it. I had a fun time. It's hard for me to pinpoint why it's doing it for me though. Right. And I think maybe part of it is that it is it feels like it's almost throwing back to an older FPS type game. You know, like it feels almost like an early PS4, late PS3 <laughs> type of first person shooter in a way of how like how simple it is. I pick up the recent Call of Duties and I am like, man. The fidelity is here. Like, like, man, like this is a fucking like I'm playing a movie right now with how good these games look and sound. X Defiant, it feels just way simpler sure. in a way that kind of just brings me back. It feels like I am playing a, a free to play first person shooter in that way. And I think that's that's not going to be to its benefit, I think, in the overall case of things. Right. I don't know how I can recommend X Defiant over other shooters aside from the fact of like, yo, if you're just in the mood to play a, a first person shooter and you're like, you don't know what to play. I think X Defiant does get the job done. I think the modes are fun. I think the the gunplay is fun. Like that's the thing is I go through all the all the um the checkpoints here and I'm like, yeah, gameplay, fun, character, like character classes. All right, cool. You got all the stuff that you expect. I think there's a bit of uh, flair there with the crossover aspect of it and you have bringing in these different Ubisoft games. I also think there's potential there. How big is the potential because you're working with just the Ubisoft library of games? I don't know, right? Man. It is the opposite of where we talk about Marvel Rivals, where I can see I can see a five year plan for Marvel Rivals. Whereas for X Defy, and I'm like, all right, you could add, I guess, another Rainbow Six <laughs> Prince, of, <laughs> Prince of Persia. I you guess add, maybe yeah. a Prince yeah. of maybe Assassin's Creed class here oh, and there. Yeah, that's like, true. that's the big picture. At a certain point, it's is that bringing people in? Is that like you know when you get six months down the line and the audience is starting to, to dissipate a little bit? Is that going to be the big revival that the game needs? Who knows? You know, maybe that could be in the gameplay as well. Maybe you could add more modes. Maybe you could add more maps. Maybe you could add more stuff like that. More different types of guns and, and stuff. But yeah, like I'm not excited about X Defiant as a live service FPS game that I'm going to play for the rest of the year. But I am excited about it just in like the meantime, right? For like the right now where I talked to you, Mike, as we were playing yesterday of, man, I'm kind of in the mood for first person, the competitive first person shooters right now. And it was getting the job done, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I'm coming, coming out with it. Do you think that that is getting the job done for you because you're not necessarily like a Call of Duty person? You know what I mean? Like you mm -hmm. don't, you don't necessarily come in with the call. Is this like the first sure. time that you've like hopped in a FPS in a while? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I kind of took a break there. Like when Halo Infinite came out, I was, I was super big into Halo Infinite for maybe two months. And then before that, like I had my uh, big moments of playing Overwatch. I had moments of playing Rainbow Six Siege as well. Mm -hmm. um, it has been a while for me. Yeah. So I think picking this up, it is, it is bringing me back where I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this feels fresh. This feels like I, I, it's a fun way to get back into this kind of game where I don't feel, I feel like Call of Duty is just too hardcore for me right now. Yeah. I, it, it's tough for me to jump into Warzone. I am not in a Battle Royale mood. I guess that's another big thing is I'm just not in a Battle Royale mood. And so this being the focus on the, you know, arena modes, uh, you know, capture that uh, type of style of gameplay. I think that is a big part of what's bringing me in as well. Yeah, we. I think Sancho West said it so well with us yesterday when we were playing it. It's like that double A first person shooter, right? Yeah. You have that Call of Duty and chat can help me. There was a couple of years ago when we had a Medal of Honor or like one of those games that came back and was like, we're going to try to compete with Call of Duty. And it's like, ah, oh, you're, you're kind of double, you're double A and it doesn't yeah. feel quite right, you know? And so 
my positives and negatives here is like, yeah, this is a team arena shooter, right? And it has hero classes almost, but a lot of them to me didn't feel like they mattered. I think mm. we're going to find the two character classes that mean the most, and that's what people are going to do. And I think that is the one with the healing. And there is another one that goes invisible. But I, I find a lot of the other ones, their abilities, their ultimates just didn't really hit or matter during the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. And I, I worry that we're just going to kind of lose sight of, hey, we got these cool factions and we're making characters inside of each faction that you know from Ubisoft. And we want you to play as them as opposed to like, hey, we're just going to play as these two characters all the time. This episode's brought to you by BetterHelp. We all carry around different stressors, big and small. I'm currently planning a wedding, so I know all about that. But when we keep them bottled up, it can start to affect us negatively. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. You can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace, and it can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Some of my best friends use BetterHelp and love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself and it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash kind of funny today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash kind of funny. On the positive sides, I really liked the maps. I think it is cool, just like we brought up with Marvel Rivals of like jumping into maps that like have that feel of the division, have that feel of Splinter Cell. You're like, oh man, this this is like a Far Cry world that I could definitely see. And so the maps are a big positive. Again, the factions are cool and all, but I just don't vibe with that. Gunplay is good. Not great, but it's good, right? It feels fine. Movement feels half a step slow. It's not as quick as I would want it to be. I feel always just a little bit slower. Uh, it's cool to grab that one-shot hit-scan sniper rifle and feel like Andy Cortez, right? Like, there's some positives here with some of the guns where it's like, oh, man, this is fun as can be, and I'm enjoying that where I feel like I'm quick-scoping and locking on to people like that. Game modes, the issue, of course jumping in on day one on launch is it's just a mess server wise. The things are melting. You can't get into a game. We were able to invite people pretty quickly. And then we locked in with like domination. Like I said, there's an escort here where you can play that. There's a new mode called hot shot, which we didn't get to try, but I am interested in seeing that. But yeah, this one just left me wanting a little more, but I think that's the issue when you step into the team arena shooter is you already have the Call of Duties and the Halos mm -hmm. running that, and it's tough to stand out. When we talk about the hero-based team arena shooter like our Overwatch, they kind of made their own area and made it their own, and so that's why Marvel Rivals calls to me a little bit more when I have Call of Duty at home right now that is firing on all cylinders, and I'm leveling up guns that then play into a different video game, which is Call yeah. of Duty Warzone, and that's kind of where you spend your life and time. I think this game has the potential if a bunch of streamers get on it, if they're able to make the right moves moving forward with seasons and content, but that's a lot to ask you, when we've seen this happen before. Do you think we get to that place with it down the line where it is exciting you and exciting the world in terms of what it's able to build up to? Because we talk about... Uh, Ubisoft recently having the games that it feels like they put out and then they, they abandoned, yeah. right? Things like Hyperscape, things like Roller Champions and other games, things like Rain Rainbow Six Extraction, which I keep forgetting came out when we played it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it feels like they'll put out these games that are meant to be these live services things, but then they'll move on from it. Recently, there was the news that they canceled Division Heartland and I think like another game as well uh, because they wanted to focus on, uh, or no, I think it was just Division Heartland because they wanted to focus on this and maybe another game. Um, but with that, right, it seems like there's a dedication there and they've been working on this for a while. I remember playing a version of this game like in 2021 or yeah, something same. like that and then last year there was like another uh, beta that they did and now we're finally here where the game is out for everybody free to play there's a dedication here that feels like ubisoft wants to support it more so than they have uh, um, some of their other recent ventures yeah i feel like they're they have they're at the right moment right now and they have the opportunity for sure like don't get me wrong this if you jump into this you're probably going to have a good time the question will be will you return week after week, you know, day after day, like we're all trying to fight for your time. And that's a tough thing to do. You're at a good moment right now in the middle of summer where Ubisoft forward, the big E3 world, like 
Great time to promote this game, maybe show off some new content to get everybody involved because we know the big dog Call of Duty is looming right around the corner. So if I was in this office, I'd be saying, how do we capture this audience right now for the next six months and really drive this home as something you got to play? My worry is, is like, we've seen this team before with this company. It just doesn't seem like they have it fully figured out when it comes to these live service games. I mean, they set the world ablaze with Hyperscape. Mm -hmm. And it just fell off the I face mean, of the planet. Blaze. Everybody and their mother wanted to play Hyperscape. They found a battle royale that brought something new and different to the table with the speed and the quick reactions. And I think they had that. They captured mm -hmm. that moment, which very rarely games nowadays do, where it's like, oh, my God, everybody's talking about this and wants to play this. And then it just kind of fell off the cliff. And I don't know if that was the longevity of the game, of we didn't have the vision. I don't know if it was just the skill of it all, of that game required a whole lot of, like, FPS movement that not many people have in their mm -hmm. arsenal, right? But it I was think, something unique and different that Ubisoft hasn't had in quite yeah. some time. I think the lead up to Hyperscape had that. But yeah. I feel like a week after Hyperscape came out, I couldn't find people that were playing it and talking about it in that way. That said, though, like I think Rainbow Six Siege is the example of Ubisoft sticking with a FPS live service type game. That's true. And really fucking nailing, nailing it, right? It launched, it had like a fine launch or whatever, but it wasn't like, it didn't, you didn't catch the world on fire or whatever. But then years later, we're talking about Rainbow Six Siege as being one of the mainstays, one of the things that everybody's talking about. I imagine that they're looking for another one of those. And I don't, I don't think Exify is going to be another Rainbow Six Siege. But I wonder if they look at that, if they can look at that as the model. Hey, mm. we nailed it here. Let's stick with it. Let's continue to actually make content for it and make exciting content for it. And if any Ubisoft live service thing has the setup, to have a pretty good one of those, it is the thing that's the crossover game where you're going to have all these different featured IP in there. This should be the one that they treat in that way. I think the question is, will they? Yeah, just it doesn't seem like the team arena shooters are the zeitgeist, right? You mm -hmm. talk about yeah. the hardcore Valorants and Rainbow Sixes of the world. They're kind of their own lane. You talk about Overwatch is its own unique thing, Battle Royales and Extraction Shooters. You just don't get that big hype for a team-based arena game right now, which is just 4v4, 5v5, same mode, same game all the time, right? You have the Call of Duty leagues of the world where it's like people play that and the general yeah. audience gets excited, but they burn out on that because it is so samey. I think that's what leads to Extraction Shooters being fun of it's different every time you go. The war zones of the world, the apex is the battle royales of every drop is unique, right? And then you make your own path of, hey, we're Valorant, and it's going to be like step for step, beat for beat, very difficult, and you got to work as a team. I think that's why Rainbow Six Siege has made it this far for sure. Yeah. And then Overwatch is its own unique beast. But a game like this is always tough to sell of like, how do you keep the longevity going? Yeah, I think that Ubisoft is trying to see this as being their potentially new For Honor, like a game that's just quietly in the background doing well. Yeah. I just don't see this as like visually appealing enough or different enough to warrant that success, right? Like For Honor is just such a unique type of video game that like it created that cult following. I just I see uh, that's the same the way I see it too. It, like I just don't see that because I, I see it being yeah like that For Honor or even a Brawlhalla. Yeah, where sure from yeah. like the outside looking in you're like who's playing but that the thing, but like, then Brawl there's like a small fan base Bra that's Brawlhalla really on it. is like a unique situation right there's not really that many you know smash brothers clones that are free to play right and like mm -hmm. for honors for honor here it's like oh we have like a dime a dozen there's a million of these types yeah. of games right so it's like I, I i understand what they're trying to go for but like looking at them like i don't think this is going to succeed